friends, welcome to Juanny's Garden. Today, my son, Greg Peter, who is here right next to me, made a delicious chile relleno lunch with topped with a fresh tomato sauce from tomatoes from the garden. Uh, in fact, tomatoes that I have growing inside the house in a pot. You're gonna get to see the entire process as we enjoy this delicious lunch. Go ahead and watch the video. First, we have to get those peppers washed before we get them into the oven. They will be going into a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes. I would say about 10 minutes on each side so that we can peel the skin. We will be adding to our uh, relleno some finely chopped onion. This will give it um, an elevated flavor. Um, you can make it with plain cheese, but um, onion makes it taste so much better. We're adding garlic as well. And um, this will be sauteed and added um, onto the cheese mix that is going in to the chile relleno. This, um, again, will give it a elevated flavor. The cheese that we're using is La Vaquita. This cheese is a very compact cheese and it's a good cheese for this recipe because it doesn't over melt. It has the consistency and the look almost of a feta cheese, but the taste is um, a lot more mild. So right now we're turning the peppers over to the other side so that they can have an even uh, roasting time so that we can peel them. So going back into cheese, continuing to crumble this cheese. We want a lot of cheese. We want those rellenos to be fully stuffed with a lot of cheese. It's going to give it such good flavor. After we pull the peppers out of the oven, we will then cover them with a foil so that um, this covered um, method will create some steam and some heat and this will make it much easier to peel the peppers. So on this cast iron, we're sauteing the onion. I should say my son, he's doing all the work. Let me give my son all the credit, he's doing all the work. Uh, so sauteing the onions, adding the garlic, and he's doing this until it becomes translucent. We don't want it overcooked. Just enough that it releases flavor. Here comes the cheese. So he's mixing the cheese with the onion and the garlic. And this is being done, as you can see, at a medium high heat. And if you notice, the cheese is not really melting. It holds its, its form and it's what we want in a chile relleno. So the more you cheese you put in there, you know, the more the flavor and it's not gonna leak all over the place. It's gonna stay inside the chili. So everything is getting mixed here. The garlic, the onion, the cheese. It's a really, really good mix. For the sauce, uh, we're getting uh, the tomatoes right from the plant. And this is the plant that I brought inside the house from the garden because it had way too many tomatoes and I didn't want to leave it outside. Um, we've had uh, freezing temperatures, so it's inside the house. Again, we give the tomatoes a good rinse. We put them <coughs> through a good wash. Even though they're inside the house, you still want to give them a good wash. They're going to be cooked for about maybe 15 minutes. You don't need to add a lot of water. Tomatoes are juicy. They don't need a lot of water, especially if you cover them. We're throwing in a little bit of garlic in there for flavor, and they're going to cook for a little while. Again, maybe 10, 15 minutes. These are Roma tomatoes. These are the tomatoes that lasted the longest in my garden. So here we go. So the peppers are finally ready to be peeled. And having them covered and having them roasted is gonna make it so much easier. It's just so easy to get them peeled. So one thing with chile relleno is you want to make sure that uh, the peel is completely taken off. And you also want to make sure that there are no seeds inside your pepper. There's nothing worse than, you know, biting into a relleno chile and then you find all the skin that is hard to chew and 
can digest or biting into a pepper and it's full of seeds that's totally a big no-no I know that when we were younger and with my family we would go out to eat that was the first thing we would criticize and believe it or not in many restaurants we did find rellenos that were prepped and they left the seeds inside and they left the skin on and I guess maybe the cooks were busy and <laughs> didn't have them to go through the whole process so anyway here um, stuffing the peppers you want to put as much cheese as you can possibly put in and the advantage of using poblanos is that these are larger peppers I've used on Himes before but they're smaller so you're able to put less cheese so these as you can tell are going to be quite filled the next step is to do the egg mix so my son here is separating the egg whites from the egg yolks and uh, <clears throat> he's quite good at this I mean my son cooks a lot and he bakes and he makes a lot of homemade dishes he bakes he makes ice cream he makes pastries he does really good uh, food for us so notice that before he uh, adds the yolk into the whites he he beat he beats it when it's on the side it's waiting he's gonna wait until this egg white um, has the right consistency and he'll test it like right there there you go perfect it's ready so once it, it is at the right consistency he's adding the egg yolks and they've already been beaten you don't add the whole egg yolk it's easier if you do it this way once um, they're both combined this is going to be the coating for your chile relleno so think about it you, you're eating a plate that has chili it has cheese it has egg delicious well delicious for those like me that are cheese lovers I love cheese in any in any form and almost any kind of cheese so the temperature we want it to be at around 330, 335, um, at the most 340, so that the chilies can cook properly. So after they've been stuffed, then you put them through a coating of flour. So this is like a binding agent so that the egg can adhere to the relleno properly. So here we have the egg white. We make sure that the chili is completely covered with the egg and then we, it goes into the frying pan. <clears throat> These are big chili so I needed a big spatula as you can see I have a gigantic spatula and there it is. You can tell that the oil is hot. You repeat the process you know for as many chilies as you want to prepare we only did a few because it's only for the three of us. So, um, as you can tell, I'm having a hard time turning the pepper over. But I'm going to show you a trick on the next pepper. I'm going to show you how it's easier to turn it over. So, here comes the next one. It's coated in flour, coated in egg. I'm removing the excess egg from that pepper. You're not making an omelet, we're making it a you know. Okay, so on this one, watch this. I'm going to show you. I'm going to point it out when I'm ready to tell you the trick so that you can turn this relleno. Okay. It's coming up. So we're going to take out the first one. It's ready. So that one's coming out. You also don't want to overcrowd your frying pan. So on this one, I'm pouring hot oil over the surface of the relleno before I turn it over. And this is going to make it super easy to turn over because when I tried to turn over the first one, it stuck to the bottom, it had raw egg, and it kind of just left the raw egg mixture on the side of the frying pan. By doing this, um, you see that? It just slides right over, really easy, super easy. So there you have it. That's a lunch for three. Let me tell you, these rellenos are pretty filling. For me, really, probably half is enough at one setting. So to make the sauce, we just take the submersion blender and just blend those tomatoes. 
the pot still on the stove and in fact it's still on we wanted to reduce a little bit you don't want your sauce to be um, too runny and if you don't have fresh tomatoes you can use canned tomatoes I have used diced tomatoes in the past I don't like tomato sauce but diced tomatoes I like and then I can just add the spices that I want onto it so this jar says ginger it is not ginger it's just a jar I'm adding oregano to the sauce and then remember it has a garlic so it's just fresh tomatoes fresh garlic oregano you let it simmer for a little while you let it reduce for a little while and there is your sauce having this meal with a salad and since I'm not growing lettuce in my garden right now this is just a lettuce from the store um, it is January so I'm not growing anything in the garden right now the tomatoes I cut from the plant today that was it that was the last of the tomatoes and that is a homegrown tomato right there so lettuce tomato simple but good and fresh some cheese on top of the salad and we don't do salad dressing so um, avocado of course so we use spices so mostly um, salt and pepper a little bit of uh, celery salt Sometimes you can throw on top also a little bit of oregano, just a little bit. You don't want to overdo it because oregano tends to be a little bit strong on the flavor. And for the moisture on the salad, it's the avocado oil. That makes, that makes a perfect salad. And it's not heavy with dressings. It's healthy and it's good for you. It looks good, doesn't it? The sauce goes right on top. Some people would rather have a dry chile than a wet chile, but either way, it's really, really good. And this can be eaten with beans and rice on the side, or it can be eaten with your salad. Really, whatever side dish you want to add to it. Uh, the start here is a chile relleno. So, friends. Here is the moment of truth. Let's see how good this came out. Too bad you don't get to taste it. Don't you wish you were here? <laughs> Look at these beautiful layers. Every single step homemade, you'll see it. Mmm. Mmm. Oh yes. You want to be here. Absolutely delicious. My son, he's not just a cook. He's a chef. Chef quality. Thanks for watching everybody. Subscribe and give us a like.